welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Rate and review the show at kevinmd.com slash rate. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash follow. Today's show, we welcome Martha Summers. She's a family physician and her Kevin MD article is titled, Art as a Tool to Manage Pain. Martha, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. Thank you very much. We'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and journey to where you are today? I'm a family physician. I trained in family medicine. I did a residency that also included global health. It was the first global health track. It was at Marshall University. So following my finishing that, I worked in Wisconsin. I paid off my loans in Northern Wisconsin. And then I went basically full-time to Malawi, where I was sponsored by Presbyterian Church USA to work at mission hospitals, collaborate with the Ministry of Health there, and and work with the national medical schools that were were coming up, um, Malawi's National Medical School, and then later in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, as well as Madagascar. So then I had breast cancer twice, and the second time I had breast cancer, it was pretty complicated. That was 2018. So it took about a year to get better. And I, it certainly aged me. And at the, about the same time, I had talked to a financial advisor and was told that I should really take a job where I can start saving for re, significantly for retirement. So I, after 25 years, I returned to Marshall University and joined their faculty. And that was September 2019. And then just a couple months after that, mm -hmm. I was able to get off for Christmas, went dog sledding, visiting my sister in Colorado. And that's where I had the accident that is part of the article. All right. So let's talk more about that article and talk about the accident that you mentioned and what happened. So two years after the, the accident, I'm you know, I'm, what should I say? I, I'm living very grateful for all the healthcare workers, very grateful for family and friends, it's my workplace that helped me get back to work. At the same time, I had a lot of processing to do um, for the trauma, for the adjustments that I've had to make in life with that, for the grief. So I started writing. And when I was writing, at the same time, I came across an article that a friend had done for Kevin MD. And I thought, huh, maybe part of my experience would be, would be helpful as an article. So that's how I wrote the article. I, the article starts, I'm with my niece, Erin, and we're at the, the sixth exhibit called Creativity During Confinement. And we actually spot my moon paintings, I mean drawings, which are behind me now. Because mm -hmm. so anyways, when we spot them, we start crying because it just kind of took back to the two years of healing. And, you know, I was riding a dog sled, flew off the dog sled, was dragged out of the forest, had needed a couple of surgeries, blood, oxygen for a couple of weeks. I was in a nursing home doing rehab for many weeks. And then even when I got home, I actually couldn't go to where I was living because I was still in a wheelchair. So my landlords, who I share part of their house, they actually moved me into their son's room and made it wheelchair accessible. So during that time, my, my niece Greta came to stay with me. She was my full-time care work giver. And besides working 24 hours with me, she was an artist also. So she got me into art. So she got me set up with a wheelchair on the patio and she got my supplies. She kept encouraging me. And so then as the more I got into art, the more art became my go-to anytime I was having intrusive pain. And it was really effective. So to this day, it's, it's a drawing that makes me be the most pain-free. So tell me more about that. So as you were recovering from this injury, tell me how often you would draw, what specific art would you do and how would that affect your pain? Yeah, regular pencils and colored pencils. And then over time and adding you have artist friends that get excited that you're drawing. So you go from regular pencils to charcoal, to pastels, to fixing it and adding gel pens. So in the beginning, I, it's just kind of like our daily routine. She reels me out to the patio and I'm drawing what I see. And 
it I, was the patio looked out over the beautiful Ohio River. The, the, and so you would draw the river and you would draw the trees and it was, you know, still before spring, but you draw that. And then I started drawing animals from Africa that I think I was missing and or drawing just about whatever was in front of me. And then I kind of settled on moons. I don't know if it was that whole confinement, looking out toward the moons or, or also you could see the moon come up each day. And, and then since, since then just a variety of things. But I, right now I draw probably, hmm, every week I do draw a few hours, usually in a set, setting and usually it is inspired by a time where I can't sleep because of the pain. And then I get up and draw, or sometimes during, sometimes during the day. And then, at the, yeah, so that time it was a daily, it was a daily routine to draw. And then it went to more sporadic. And then the more now that I work on things, sometimes I draw when I don't have pain and just kind of touching them up. So I probably draw right now about, about six to eight hours a week. And when you were drawing, did that completely take your mind away from the pain? Well, parts of it. Certainly, certainly not like you start drawing and then the pain is gone. You know, it's not like that. It's more of you start drawing and get more into it. And then you kind of forget your pain and then it comes back a bit. And then you kind of keep going into, going into it. So it certainly does not take it away all the way. Sometimes it's a fight and you're really you're not really able to draw so effectively, you're kind of fighting it. Mm -hmm. But many times you do go into a zone and you kind of get a hour or two for your pain. Now, how did this experience affect your practice when you see patients in, in pain? Is this something that influences your treatment? Yeah, and it's even quite interesting because this last month I'm now re doing Thursdays at the nursing homes that are doing rehab, which I just, so like this morning, I was seeing patients who had had painful accidents who were doing rehab at a nursing home. And, and I, one of them I even had to, to examine, had to remove from the same, the same rehab situation I was in. So how does it influence it? Well, it, sometimes it makes you so empathetic. You have, to, you have to make sure that you're, being objective too. Sometimes you kind of have to take a break and come back in because you're actually living your own experience, which is not the patient's experience. But most of the time it's quite helpful. Most of the time you can share, yeah, I, I understand a little bit. I don't understand your experience, but I have some experience with this. And that kind of idea of just kind of using every tool possible. So it helps it, but it's still, it's a learning process. A learning process not to be triggered into your own emotions, which are not helpful to the patient. As, and so I think that's why I feel like we have to, I almost have this feeling as we have to be able to do this better. Mm -hmm. And I have to try to figure out, is this something that, you know, that we can do studies on? So what I'm doing right now is we have Dr. Adam Franks is the head in our department for research. So I'm working with him of how to turn this idea of drawing as a, as a drawing as a tool for pain into a research study. And, and we're just, I'm discussing with other colleagues, whether we'll be doing it at a nursing home or, you know, or other places where people are in residence whether we'll be doing it as part of our addictions medicine or whether we'll be doing it with other patients who are kind of care patients. So we're just we're kind of figuring out that now. So, so I can give you an answer in the future that says, yes, it's really helping them versus kind of how to do that. As far as you know, is there any data or studies that suggest the connection with art and art can be more than, of course, drawing. It could be music as well. And that connection with relieving illness and pain, as far as you know, are there, is there any data and studies supporting that? Yeah, there is. There's, there's certainly data as far as art therapy, when someone works with an art therapist. There's also data for specific, specific diagnoses, or they've termed it as either programmatic visual art making or therapeutic art making. And 
for that, there is some with cancer patients, both children cancer patients and adult patients. There is some, it wasn't the main thing they were looking for, but there's actually some with dementia patients. And so those are the ones that, that did, oh, then there was also one study that was a study on patients with dialysis, where again, it wasn't what they were mainly looking for, but it showed decreased pain. So, so diagnosis specific, some with cancer, some with patients with dialysis, and some with patients with dementia. And that's all that we have so far. Kind of interesting is I saw this last month, the article at, you know, that I did for Kevin MD was cited in Discovery Magazine. Hmm last month and they also they did cite the article that showed improvement with cancer pain we're talking to martha summers she's a family physician her kevin md article is titled art as a tool to manage pain martha assuming that a lot of your studies come to conclusions that have fruition what do you anticipate the role of art to be when it comes to managing chronic pain well, I think it's something that we don't know. And I kind of, I liked that the article was even cited in Discovery Magazine, so many other people's ideas will come and will go forward. But I think in the shorter term, something like drawing with supplies is something that could be rolled out. If it, if it shows to help in specific settings, it's, let's say it's cheap enough, we could use artists or art teachers to give let's just say we don't have it worked out, but let's say it was two hour sessions over six weeks. Mm -hmm. If people started seeing how that works and then from what we learn, go forward. And if that does work well, then, you know, again, it's not the, it's not the end all for sure. A friend on Facebook had, you know, they had asked about it and, but it's another tool and very hard to manage issue. And so I think it will, my hope is it will play an increased role. We already know looking at art can be helpful and listening to art can be helpful. So, so the hope is it will play an increased role. And my final question, what are some of your take home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? Yeah, I think when you're frustrated, look to the, look to the arts. We talked about drawing and how that can help with pain. I also, I did a lot of occupational therapy, but I didn't get like the nuanced movement of my left hand. So I'm taking piano lessons. Yeah, in fish for, for you can hear that I have a, don't have the best speaking voice, and I certainly took speech therapy as a child, and then again in France to, when I was learning French. And uh, but it was singing. I was actually taking singing lessons for two years that helped me to be more understandable in speech. So I think when you're frustrated, look to the arts to to give you more tools. Martha, thank you so much for sharing your story, time, and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Okay, thank you very much.